Our objectives in this lesson are the following. Differentiate confidence level from confidence interval. Identify the length of the confidence interval given the sample mean and margin of error. And solve problems involving the length of a confidence interval. Let's have a quick review of our previous lesson. Find the value of t with probability 0.25 to its right with n equals 5. First, let us sketch our t curve. Let us estimate the location of t. It says here the probability to its right is 0.25. Maybe somewhere here is our t. And this area here to the right of t is 0.25. Let's have our t table. The picture tells us one tail whose area is 0.25. So one tail, 0.25, it's here. Let us box this column. And then for our degrees of freedom, our given is n. So we have to subtract 1. So 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. Our degrees of freedom is equal to 4. Let us box this row. And the intersection of these two, 0 0.741, is our t. Therefore, our t is equal to 0 0.741. We have learned that statistics have two different kinds, the descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. There are two ways in making inferences about the population. One is through estimation and another one is hypothesis testing. Our discussion for today will focus on estimation, particularly on interval estimation. Let us define first estimation. It is a process whereby we select a random sample from a population and use a sample statistic to estimate a population parameter. So here is the estimation process. First, you have to define your population. And then from here, you are going to choose your sample. You are going to subject your sample to a statistical test. And whatever you will get from here is what we call a statistic. Remember, a statistic is any numerical value that describes the sample. We are going to use this a statistic to estimate about the parameter. And we all know that a parameter is anything that describes the population. Let's start first with point estimation. It is a single numerical value obtained from a random sample to estimate the corresponding population parameter. A graphical representation of this is this one. So this is the point estimate. It is just a single numerical value. Here are most common point estimators. Sample mean, x bar, is the best point estimate for the population mean, mu. Sample standard deviation, a small letter s, is the best point estimator for the population standard deviation, sigma. And sample proportion, p hat, is the best point estimator for population proportion, capital P. Let's have an example for point estimation. A random sample of 35 grade 11 students in St. John Integrated School were selected. Their mean height in centimeters are as follows. Find the point estimate of the mean height of all grade 11 students in the school. To solve for the point estimate of the population, all we have to do is to add all this height of 35 samples. And then we are going to divide it by 35 because we are looking for the average. And the answer here, 153.89, is the point estimate for the population mean height of all grade 11 students in St. John Integrated School. Now let us have interval estimation. It consists of two numerical values defining an interval within which lies the unknown parameter we want to estimate with a specified degree of confidence. Here is a pictorial representation of interval estimation. Here are the two numerical values defining the interval. The values depend on the confidence level which is equal to 1 minus alpha. Alpha is the probability of error. 
you will learn more about this later. The interval estimate may be expressed as estimator plus minus reliability coefficient times the standard error. So you've seen here confidence level. Let us define it. Confidence level is the likelihood expressed as a percentage or a decimal that the interval estimate contains the population parameter. Let us have this figure. So this portion here is what we call the confidence level. And this is denoted as 1 minus alpha. 1 minus alpha is the area beneath the normal curve between critical values. So this means these two values here denoted by negative z and positive c because they are standard scores or z scores are critical values. And this portion here is the alpha. Alpha is the remaining area in the tails. Now, alpha is the probability of error. So the confidence level is 1 minus alpha. 1 is the total area of the curve. Subtracting the probability of error, then you have the confidence level. If these two sides here is alpha, then each side is alpha over 2. Simply because alpha divided by 2 is alpha over 2. Here are the common level of confidence. The first one is 90% or 0.90. On each tail, you have 5%. 5 plus 90 plus 5 equals 100%, the total area of the curve. When you combine 5 plus 5 here, it will give you 10% or 0.10. That will be your alpha level. The corresponding Z value of 90% confidence level is negative 1.645 and positive 1.645. The next one is 95% or 0.95. So 100% minus 95% is 5%. Dividing into two tails, each tail is 2.5%. So when you add this two, again, is 5% or 0 0.05. The corresponding Z value of 95% confidence level is negative and positive 1.960 or 1.96. The last one is 99% or 0.99. 100% 99. minus 99% is 1% or 0 0.01. Dividing by two, that is 0.5% on each tail. The corresponding Z value of that is negative and positive 2.575. How do we interpret confidence level? So let's start with 90% confidence level. If the level of confidence is 90%, this means that we are 90% confident that the interval, this interval, contains the population mean mu. If the confidence level is 95%, we are 95% confident that the interval contains the population mean mu. And for 99%, we are 99% confident that the interval contains the population mean mu. So let's talk more about confidence interval. It is also known as the interval estimate. It is the range of values that is used to estimate a parameter. The estimation may or may not contain the true value of the parameter. It has lower and upper limit that serve as a boundary of the estimate. It is written as mu is less than the upper limit but greater than the lower limit or open parenthesis lower limit comma upper limit close parenthesis to solve for the lower and upper limit we have this formula so lower limit is equal to the sample mean minus the margin of error and for upper limit we have the sample mean plus the margin of error so again x bar is the sample mean and capital e here is the margin of error so what is margin of error. It is the range of values below and above the given statistic. Here is the formula. So Z sub alpha over 2 is the critical value or confidence coefficient. 
Sigma is the population standard deviation and N is the sample size. We'll talk more about margin of error in my next lesson. For now, in some of the examples, margin of error will be provided. Let's have our first example. The time spent in playing Dota of 125 teenagers in your barangay ranges from 30 minutes to 1.5 hours at 99% confidence level. Let us determine the following. Let's have the first one, sample size. So we have here 125. Lower limit is 30 minutes. Upper limit, 1.5 hours or in minutes, 90 minutes. Confidence interval, mu, is less than 90 but greater than 30. Or we can also write it this way, 30, 90 and close by parentheses. To solve for the average playing time, we just have to add 30 and 90 and then divide it by 2. 30 plus 90 is 120. 120 divided by 2 is 60 minutes. For the margin of error, we have 60 minus 30. That will give us 30. Or the upper limit, 90 minus the average playing time, 60, is also equal to 30. Another one, to augment financial shortage, Jenny sells mango shakes every afternoon after class. 84% of 35 randomly selected customers were satisfied with 2.87% margin of error. Letter A, sample size, we have here 35 randomly selected customers. So our sample size is 35. Average percentage of people who are satisfied is 84%. Margin of error is given 2.87%. For the lower limit, simply subtract margin of error from the average percentage of people who are satisfied. And this will give you 81.13%. And to compute for the upper limit, you simply have to add the margin of error to the average percentage of people who are satisfied. And this will give you 86.87%. Therefore, our confidence interval is mu is less than 86.87% but greater than 81.13% or 81.13%, 86.87% and close with a parenthesis. Let us do extra challenge. A local government is planning to provide a tablet for online learning of senior high school students. Upon canvassing 30 pieces of tablets, the average price is 15,000 pesos with a margin of error 305.75 pesos and a confidence level of 95%. First, let us identify our given here. So we have here 30 pieces of tablets. So this is our sample size, our N. And then we have here average price of 15,000 pesos. So this is our sample mean, X bar. And then we have the margin of error, capital E, 305.75. And then we have the confidence level in notation. This is 1 minus alpha. Let's have first letter A. What is the lower limit? So lower limit is equal to the sample mean minus the margin of error. So our sample mean is 15,000. Our margin of error is 305.75. And this will give us 14,694.25. Now for letter B, upper limit. Upper limit is equal to sample mean plus the margin of error. Let us substitute our values here and this will give us 15,305.75. So our confidence interval will be mu is less than 15,305.75 but greater than 14,694.25. Or you can also write it this way. Letter D is the budget. 14,000 lies within the confidence interval. The lower limit is 14,694.25. Therefore, 14,000 do not lie within the confidence interval. For our summary, here are the things that we discussed in this lesson. 
Now, it is time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. Let us answer. After the summative exam, a sample of 50 students were randomly selected. Their score ranges from 28 to 38 with a mean of 33 and 90% confidence level. Letter A, what is the lower limit? That is 28. Upper limit is 38. What is the confidence interval? Mu is less than 38 but greater than 28 or you can also write in this way what is the margin of error we have the formula for the lower limit is equal to the sample mean minus the margin of error if we want to solve for e then we simply have to exchange the position of e and the lower limit so substituting sample mean and lower limit this will give us Five. And last one, make a conclusion regarding the population mean. So with 90% level of confidence, we can say that we are 90% confident that the population mean score is between 28 and 38. Gets? Our next lesson is computing for the length of the confidence interval.